What is up YouTube? Chris here and we are kicking off the first in a series of painting tutorials that I'll be doing here on the channel. And for this episode, we are going to be painting the Baratheon Queensmen. These are really fantastic models and I think they would be perfect for showcasing my own technique for quick and easy non-metallic metal. We'll also go over a few basic things that I like to keep in mind when I'm painting miniatures and show you the color scheme that I chose, which I think really make these models stand out on the table. All right, so step one, of course, is priming your model. I personally use the Xenothal highlighting technique, which uh, for those of you who don't know what Xenothal highlighting is, you prime the whole model in black, and then with a white primer or paint, you spray from above to about 45 degrees, and what you'll get is a baseline for depth and depth is one of the key factors that I think really makes a model pop. It's also a good guideline since we're going to be using some contrast paints to really bring out some of the details and some of the shadows and highlights. All right so first we're going to start off with the Space Wolves Gray contrast paint with a one-to-one -one water mix. It's a one-to-one -one mix but if you feel like it's too light or you want more details with, with some of the shading, you can always go back and add a little bit more once it dries. It usually takes about uh, a minute or two to dry, so that's the great thing about contrast paints is you can really be quick and easy with it, and also as long as you're not drowning your miniature in contrast and letting it dry, then you can always go back and add a little bit more if you feel like it needs it. And what you can see here is the contrast paint already doing the hard work for you. So it pulls up in the recesses to add more depth and then it still shades a little bit of the highlights giving the impression that the light is hitting these metal pieces and shining off of the most raised areas. So next up we are going to paint the base of the gold armor plating on this model. So we are using P3's Rucksack Tan. And just remember to, to thin your paints, no matter what paint you're using, that's a general rule that you'll hear a lot of people say is to, to thin your paints. P3 is a little bit more finicky than most other paints when it comes to finding the right uh, consistency with the water mix. But you'll see here we're going to start off with some of the, the knee plating. So the gold plating that I'm painting here is to add more visual interest to uh, the model. You could go through and paint all the armor pieces in Space Wolves Gray. It'll still look fine, but for me, I like having splashes of color here and there in the models just to sort of bring the theme together. Also, these are Queensmen, so gold is very fitting for uh, a model like that. Uh, I also chose the torso piece right there since it sort of looks like a crown. Uh, on the front side that gold is a good choice for that. And then you'll see here I'm gonna top it off by painting the gold there on the helmet. Then lastly we are going through and we're adding some accent gold trim to the armor pieces and then topping it off with painting the flames on the emblem of the shield. And then here you see my best friend Joe the spider sort of making an appearance on the video he sort of scurries away across my wet palette there uh, startled me a little bit but he wasn't harming anyone so I just sort of let him go about his day and then finally with army painters fine detail brush I go through and I spot check and see if there's any spots that I missed uh, on the armor trim there and there you have it so we have a base for the armor and the gold trim there now we're gonna take a one-to-one -one water mix of Wildwood Brown contrast paint and we are going to go through and paint all of the leather on his pants and boots. So you'll see here, it starts off quite thin for me. The key is to at least get some of that brown in the recesses there. The contrast paint generally does tint whatever you're painting that color. Again, the beauty of contrast paints is if, if it's a little bit too light for your liking, you can always go through, add a little bit more contrast paint to your mix there, and then just go over it again. 
and you'll see that's what I'm doing here. And with this step, you can really see the benefits of how much time contrast paints save you in some of these steps. Before, I would do a base coat, at least three layers, and then sort of building up from there into a highlight. But with contrast paints, you can really achieve that just by one or two coats and really is a good product. I enjoy it. I've been using it for about a year now. And uh, I don't think I'll go back, especially when you're trying to achieve tabletop quality. All right, so now we are going to start painting the flowing fabric here with P3's Sanguine Base. It's going to take at least two or three coats of paint to really get good coverage here. Even then, you can still see the Zenithal highlight still sort of showing through the layers of paint, which is good because we'll use that as a guideline for when we highlight this miniature. I chose Sanguine Base because I really like the color combination of maroon and gold. But you'll also notice that after highlighting, the maroon sort of turned into more of a magenta slash pink, which I didn't hate, so we just decided to roll with it. And as we finish up the helmet here, you can see the, the color scheme coming together. So it's two colors. If you're counting the metallic, it's three, but the main theme here is using maroon and gold to bring the whole unit together. I personally only choose two or three colors when figuring out a scheme for a unit. Anything more than that, I think, makes the models on the tray look a little bit too busy. And I'm all about simplicity and speed, so two to three colors are usually the way to go. Now we are using Black Templar Contrast Paint, a two to one water mix this time, to paint up the scabbard and uh, this section of the sword here. Up next, we are gonna go through with Gore Grunt of Fur, another two to one water mix and we are going to do the details of the belts and the small leather pieces on the armor. Now we're going to use Nuln Oil to add a wash to the maroon fabric here. You'll notice that I'm making sure that it doesn't pull up too much in the recesses. Uh, this wash is really gonna help this part of the model stand out, especially when we add our highlights to it. Again, it's all about depth. We want to make sure that our model pops when it sits on the table. And with washes, that's another way to sort of get the definition between your dark areas, your mid-tones, and your highlights. So now is the next step when trying to achieve gold non-metallic metal. And with the base coat of yellow, I'm going through with Agaros Dunes Contrast straight from the pot. And we're sort of using it as a wash and you'll see that it pulls up nicely in the recesses and leaves some areas that we will use as guidelines for when we decide to highlight these uh, gold armor plates. I'm probably not the only one that uses this technique for non-metallic gold, but uh, I find it works for me. It's very quick, it's very easy. We'll go through and we'll coat every part of the model that is based in the rucksack tan. This will take about five to 10 minutes to dry once you add the contrast paint to the gold plating here. Just remember to go through and get every part that you base coated in yellow, including the fine detail trim along the armor plates there.
Okay, now your eyes did not fool you. This is a completely different model, but unfortunately when I was painting the other one, I did not realize that my camera had ran out of battery, so I went ahead and just chose this model to continue on with the process. So we are going through with P3's moldy ochre and we're going through adding details to the raised edges and at this step this is where the armor starts to pop out a little bit with the different tones of gold and browns. You could totally skip this step after adding the contrast and say that it's done. Uh, personally I think it could use a little bit more highlights. Um, the more highlights the better. Again we're trying to achieve maximum depth with the model to make it stand out on the table. And here you can see it's starting to come together nicely. So again, just going through adding splashes of, of yellow over some of the most raised edges of the gold plating. And then once we are finished with this highlighting step, we will move on to the final highlighting step, which is adding white. And this final step of my non-metallic metal technique is using P3's Moral White to highlight all the raised edges of metal. And we are trying to give the illusion of sunlight reflecting off of the armor here. So you'll see we're adding little bits of splashes of white on the knee guards. And the key here is not to be too liberal with the white highlight. You just want to go over the sections that we painted in yellow, some of those highlights, and just lightly add a few dots or lines to really achieve the effect. Now we're gonna go through and add some of the same white highlights to the steel armor that we painted with Space Wolves Gray. And if you notice that you added a little bit too much white to certain areas, you can always just uh, wash your brush off with a little bit of water and even it out a little bit. So similar to what we did with the gold plating, we will use the Space Wolves Gray contrast that we applied earlier as a guideline as to where we add some of these white highlights. So now back to our original model that we were working with. I'm going through with P3's Sanguine Highlight to um, accentuate this flowing maroon fabric here on the model. P3's line of paint is really nice because some of their colors have a base pot. You can also purchase the same color in their highlight version. So this is what we're using here to go through and add some depth to the fabric. And also going through and adding the same highlights to the helmet area there. Mm -hmm. 
And here you can see what it looks like with the combination of the base maroon, the null oil shade, and then the highlight. Then we go over some minor details on the shield with P3's jackbone, just painting the antlers of the stag. And then finally, we are using a three to one white mix with sanguine highlight to really bring out some of these raised edges of the maroon here. Um, I had mentioned earlier that the original plan was to have a two-tone of maroon and gold, but after adding these highlights, it really brought the, the tones to more of a magenta color, which I was, uh, I was a fan of, so we decided to go with it, and we're not being as liberal as we were with the original Sanguine highlight. We're just going over some of the most raised edges, and then and here we can see what the finished model looks like. So there you have it. Thanks for sticking around for the first painting tutorial on the channel. I really hope that some of you have walked away with maybe one or two things regarding my own techniques, especially with non-metallic metals. And if you guys like this video, feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe, you guys know the drill. And if you guys have any requests for the next model you'd like me to paint, Feel free to shout out and I'll see you guys next time. Holy shit. congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. So if you like this content, please consider supporting me through Patreon. You can find that link in the description below or at the very least, just hit that subscribe button or like the video. If not for me, at least do it for Rosie. Say bye, Rosie. Oh.